Now let me tell you a little bit more what do we actually mean by access IP and you might have wondered what is this about innovation solutions for food security. Now the first thing to say IP intellectual property is really very much at our heart at Syngenta. Now you might be surprised to learn that as a company we invest more than 1.1 billion dollar every year into research and development. That's quite a large sum. It's about more than a bit over 8% of our global turnover every year. And when you look at the seeds part of our business, which this is mostly about seeds and plant breeding, is actually more than 13% of our turnover we're investing every year into R&D. Now just to put that a little bit into perspective, the world's most valuable company, Apple, in 2011, has spent 2.4 billion, just over twice as what we're spending. But for them, it's only 2% of their global turnover. Now, if I look at the other side of the spectrum, some of the really successful family-owned seed breeding companies, for instance, in vegetable seeds, they can spend as much as 25 to 30% of the turnover into R&D. So plant breeding is a very, very innovative industry. And, and that innovation, of course, is directed at making agriculture more productive, helping emerging markets to develop faster, and basically improving also environmental sustainability of what we do in agriculture. This is key, as we believe, to enable us to feed 9 billion people by 2050. Not only do we believe it enables us, but we also believe it's absolutely possible with that sort of innovation to feed 9 billion people without using any more land that we're using today, without depleting any of our natural resources. Hence, it's so important that we sustain that innovation. Now, you cannot think about innovation without at the same time thinking about intellectual property and the protection of intellectual property. Now, of course, when it comes to patents on plants, this is a very uh, touchy subject. There's a lot of different opinions out there. There's quite a lot of misconceptions and controversy on that subject. We've got some clear views. On one hand, it's absolutely clear that you cannot patent life as such. Life as such cannot belong to anyone. On the other hand, it's also very clear that all around the world, plant breeders, be it from the smallest academic institute to the largest agribusiness company, all of these work with high-tech, modern breeding methodologies to identify new traits, to utilize new plant characteristics in a similar way than any other highly innovative industry, be it IT, be it high-tech, be it pharmaceuticals, uh, be it anything else you can think about. So it's very clear that with that sort of investment, with that sort of attitude, with how modern plant breeding has evolved over the last decade, we do need a really well-functioning intellectual property system. However, having said that, intellectual property with the ambition, with the goal to feed 9 billion people by 2050, with the ambition to achieve food security, obviously needs to be different than elsewhere. At least that's what we believe. It's got to be more collaborative, more easily accessible, more open, more fostering exchange. So in one sentence, it does need a pretty bold move from where we are today in IP, in plant breeding, to where we should be in order to deliver to that goal of food security. Now, I'm very proud to say today that Syngenta ma made a leap to a very innovative system in exactly that space. We are launching Traitability today, our web-based e-licensing system with which we are making some of our most important patented technology available to everyone. What it basically means is that through a web license you can get access to our patent and tr native traits in vegetable seed varieties as well as access to some of our most important enabling technologies. And we think this is a fundamental leap towards that sort of innovation that you require in that space. So previously, 
it could have been quite a lengthy and tedious process for anyone in the industry to get access to this IP. Now it's very easy. You go on the web page, you select the technology you're interested in, you download the agreement, you sign it, you send it to us, and you're in business. And you get all of that at fair, reasonable, non-discriminatory terms. What's perhaps more important, there's been quite some uncertainty in the previous system for plant breeders who access and utilize varieties in their breeding programs to improve them and to further develop them because they didn't know whether in any of the varieties they've been using there was patented traits. So they were never quite sure whether they could be violating patent laws by, by doing so. Again, it's much easier now. We'll be very transparent. We'll publicize those varieties that contain patented traits. And as a breeder, you know exactly what you're working with. If you do research with these varieties, it's for free. And only by the time you have developed a new variety that contains that patented trait and you're beginning to commercialize this, there'll be a royalty to Syngenta. So for us, this is a big step towards that sort of innovation that we believe is required in order to drive towards that goal of food security and towards that goal of feeding 9 billion people by 2050. I would now like to invite you to sit back, listen to some of the provocative themes that you're going to hear now during the afternoon from both within that industry, but also from very different industries, very different perspectives. I'm really looking forward to what's going to be, um, I'm, I'm sure, a rather thought-provoking afternoon. Afterwards, we're going to invite you next door to a taste of innovation where you can try some innovation which is perhaps a little more palatable and tangible than IP. But uh, we'll come to that later.